Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And some people I thank have inspired me. I hope they can inspire you as well. And I will have links below to their sites. They are Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, Rabbi Eli Mansur, Rabbi Lon Anava, Rabbi Yuval Ovadia, Rabbi Daniel Asur, um, Rabbi uh, Yaron Ruvain, and Rabbi David Ashir. I might have done that in the wrong order that's listed. Um, and anyway, and also, um, if you've never checked out this channel before, I will have a link below to my first video, which explains what MLM for this all means, what it stands for, and what I'm doing. So this is for the upcoming Parashat, Parashat Emor, from Rabbi, um, and the insights are from Rabbi Eli Mansour, and I call this like a new experience. So one of the topics that's discussed in Parashat Emor is the mitzvah which we observe each night um, during this period between Pesach and Shavuot, which is the uh, mitzvah of Sirat HaOmer, which is to count the 49 days from the 16th of Nisan until Shavuot. So the meaning of this mitzvah can be understood by considering the name of the Yom Tov it leads to, which is Shavuot. Rather than refer to this Yom Tov as Zaman Matan Torah, which is the time of the giving of the Torah, as we refer to Shavuot in our prayers, the Torah instead refers to this holiday as, quote, the holiday of weeks. So why? The answer is that we need to prepare for this Yom Tov during the weeks leading to the events of Matan Torah. The Jewish holidays do not merely commemorate historical events. Their role is not simply to help us remember what happened. Rather, the spiritual forces that were at play at the time these events transpire resurface each year at the time we commemorate these events. This means that on Shavuot, we not only recall the event of Matan Torah, but we experience it anew. Each year, it is as though we return to, uh, to Har Sinai and once again accept upon ourselves the Torah. And this is why the weeks leading up to Shavuot are so crucial. If a celebration was only commemorative, there wouldn't be much to prepare for. But since Shavuot is about re-experiencing the event of Matan Torah, we need to prepare for it. Just as our ancestors needed to undergo a growth process after leaving Mitzrayim to prepare for Matan Torah, we must likewise prepare ourselves during these weeks after Pesach, so we will be ready to properly accept the Torah anew on Shavuot. So the mission in Perkei Avos 6, 6 teaches that, quote, the Torah is acquired through 48 things. There are 48 indispensable attributes that we must master in order to properly acquire the Torah, and the Mishnah proceeds to list all 48. It has been suggested that the 48 days of the Omer correspond to these 48 attributes, as on each day of the Omer we should try to focus on one attribute so we can properly prepare for Matan Torah. The 49 and final day of the Omer, which is the day before Shavuot, is when we try to review all that we've learned and gained the, a previous um, and gained, excuse me, the previous 48 days, so we enter Shavuot fully prepared to accept the Torah. We obviously cannot go through all 48 in this context, so we will simply point out two, uh, Ema and Yira. So Ema is reverence and Yira is fear. Torah, unlike all other disciplines, must be studied with a certain awe of reverence. When it comes to all other fields, it makes no difference what one wears while he studies, in what kind of environment he studies, and what his mood is as he studies. But Torah, however, must be learned with a degree of fear and with a feeling of reverence. The reason can be understood from the Talmud's statement that since the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash, Hashem is present when, wherever Torah is studied. The Shekhinah, which is the divine presence, presence used, to, used to rest in the Beit HaMikdash, and now rests wherever a Jew studies Torah. If we approach Torah learning with this awareness, we will naturally study with Ema and Yira. When the Kohen Gadol completed the special Yom Kippur service, during which he entered the holiest chamber of the Beit HaMikdash, he would make a special feast, celebrating his having survived this experience. This is the level of fear evoked by being in Hashem's presence in the Beit HaMikdash, and this is how we should approach Torah learning as well. We need to realize that as we study Torah, we are like Kohanim, serving Hashem in the Beit HaMikdash. How fortunate we are to have received such a precious gift, the Torah, through which we are able to live in Hashem's presence. May we always cherish this great privilege and commit ourselves to take full advantage of the opportunity that we have to draw close to the Creator through the study of His Torah, and may we all merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days and the rebuilding of our final and everlasting Beit HaMegdash. Amen, and thanks for watching.